It's now time for statements. The member from Holdham and Norfolk. Uh, speaker, today is a special day for Ontario's Orthodox Christian community. November 30th is the Feast of St. Andrew, the first called uh, Apostle. Andrew is the patron saint of the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople. Notwithstanding continued religious uh, persecution, the Patriarchate perseveres. This is principally the result of the extraordinary vision, the leadership, the strong faith of one man. Since 1991, the spiritual leader of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church has been His All Holiness, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew. His All Holiness is truly a unique and transformational religious leader. David, uh, Rabbi David Rosen of the American Jewish Committee calls Bartholomew, and I quote, an inspiring example not only for his own flock and faith, but indeed for all religious communities and for all the society. The Ecumenical Patriarch has worked tirelessly to foster better understanding, peaceful coexistence between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The message of love and tolerance from Patriarch Bartholomew is especially needed in the Holy Lands and the Middle East, where the persecution of Christians is most acute, as hundreds of thousands who confess the Orthodox faith here in Ontario, led by His Eminence Metropolitan Archbishop Satorios, celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew today. Let us remember and work towards improving religious freedom and protecting persecuted minorities around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I'm so pleased to rise today to honour two incredible members of the Windsor community. Both Dr. Mark Awuku and Dr. Darren Cargill received prestigious awards for their outstanding work. Dr. Mark Awuku was named the 2017 Ontario Pediatrician of the Year by the Pediatricians Alliance of Ontario. Dr. Awuku is a, comedy, a community pediatrician, maybe he's a comedy pediatrician too, as well as a professor at the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry. He was also chair of pediatrics at the Hotel du Grace Hospital in Windsor for six years. In the words of the PAO's president, Dr. Awuku is a multi-talented physician, mentor, and community leader. He embodies the grace, patience, and scholarly accomplishments that is found in many of the 1,400 pediatricians in Ontario. Dr. Darren Cargo also received recognition for his invaluable work and was presented the Award of Excellence by the Ontario College of Family Physicians. Dr. Cargo was recognized for his extensive leadership in palliative and end-of-life care, acting as the voice of hospice palliative care in Windsor. I have seen his dedication and hard work firsthand when I worked with Dr. Cargo on my private member's bill, Dan's Law. He has been an outstanding advocate for the rights of people in hospice care, and I am grateful for having the opportunity to work with him and get to know him. Congratulations to both of these outstanding Windsor doctors. Here, here. Most children do love funny doctors. Thank you. Further member statement, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it's uh, by coincidence, I'm going to make an announcement about the opening of the Young University subway line up wow. into York Region, and the, one of the persons mainly responsible for putting this together is here by accident, and that's Karen Stintz, the former TDC chair, wow. and a constituent. Let's hear for Karen. Great work, Karen. Anyways, <laughs> this is coincidental. Anyways, this line is going to open uh, on December the 17th. There's going to be an open house and everybody's welcome. And the beautiful thing about this line, as you know, the Conservatives filled in subways, but Liberals are building them. We're going to have the new station at Downsview Park to serve the students. Finch West will have a station. And York University, after all these years, the students of York University are going to be able to get on a subway train and go north or south. It's going to be a fantastic boon to York University. And then another beautiful station, they're all architectural masterpieces, Pioneer Village is going to have a station, and that's very important in opening up that transit corridor for people who live in that northwest part of uh, the city that were deprived of rapid transit. Now they're going to have it. There's going to be a station of 407 also, and then to top it all off, for the first time in history, we're going to interregional subways from City of Toronto to York Region for the first time. December 17th, come on out. Karen Stintz is buying. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The member's statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I rise this afternoon to recognize the work of the Durham Regional Council and their 
recently issued report from the Task Force on Affordable and Seniors Housing. Speaker, this uh, task force focused on three key areas. Uh, committee education, which educated committee members on what planning and financial tools were available to support the maintenance of existing rental housing. Discussion on the implementation of the region's corporate strategic plan, regional official plan, and other matters that would further the region's goals related to affordable and seniors housing. And third, Speaker, identifying potential collaborative partnerships with the federal and provincial governments, area municipalities, financial and housing development industries, and residents of region, uh, region of Durham. This particular initiative, Speaker, aligns with the 10-year housing plan that was uh, launched and implemented approximately two, two and a half years ago under the leadership of Roger Anderson, who is the CEO and regional chair of Durham Region. My sincere hope, Speaker, is that the recommendations made in this very important report will further contribute to ensuring that no one in Durham Region goes to sleep at night without a roof over their head. Thank you, Speaker. Further members, statement the member from London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. It's always a pleasure to rise as the MPP for London Fanshawe and the Legislature on behalf of my constituents. This summer, I met with Barb, and she shared her home care experience that her husband, Ron, received. Barb told us Ron was experiencing heart failure, kidney failure, liver issues, and diabetes when he was admitted to hospital in June 2017. After a 10-day stay in hospital, five of those days being in critical care, Ron was released from hospital with the understanding that he was to receive adequate medical and community care. He was released from hospital on July 7th. Their expectation was that Ron was to receive home care very quickly. Much to their surprise and disappointment, it took three weeks for Ron to be seen by a nurse at home. Barb took action. She sent pictures of Ron's failing body to several people, including the family physician, at which point Ron began to receive the care that he needed. She is concerned and wants to advocate for others. She wants her voice to be heard, and she wants things to change. First, she thinks that people should, should receive mandatory home care 48 hours after they've been released from the hospital. Coincidentally, I actually presented a similar solution to the Legislature April, 23rd, April 25, 2013, asking the government to implement a five-day home care guarantee. She also thinks that consumers of home care services should all, only re only have to tell their stories once, and communications need to be improved between medical professionals both in hospital and in community. The care that Ron did not receive in his final days placed a monumental burden on Barb. As the caregiver, a grieving wife, she knew he was dying. Barb lost her husband on August 4th. More and more people are coming forward with their experiences with home care, just like Barb Thank and you. Ron's, and it's time that we listen to what people need. Thank, Thank you. you. Further member statements, the member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And today I want to celebrate Variety Village, an amazing charitable organization dedicated to supporting persons with disabilities. Now, a few weeks back, Speaker, I had the pleasure of touring the facility at Kingston Road and Danforth Ave with then with the President, Karen Stintz, and Director of Communications, Linda Emmy, both of whom are here today, and we welcome you to Queen's Park. Variety Village was the first institution of its kind in Canada designed to provide a better life and more abundant opportunities for persons with physical disabilities. And the land on which the facility stands was donated by the Ontario government, and the Premier of the day, the Honourable George Drew, opened it in 1948. So for almost 70 years, Variety, the children's charity in Variety Village, have provided specialized programs and inclusive education. Nurses from across the province, along with the Ontario Society for Crippled Children, and welcomed the first 40 students into the in the fall of 1949. They began with 15 support staff, three teachers, two house mothers, and a cook. And a lot has changed, and Variety Village has since become the single greatest provider ex of accessible recreation and sports programming in Canada, currently providing over 1.4 million hours of programming to over 30,000 people over 15,000 which have a physical disability. And for nearly 70 years, they've given young, eager individuals the help and comments they need to overcome barriers to access. Many Paralympic athletes begin their training at Variety Village, and we're all very proud of the young people and when they experience sport and fitness for the first time. So, Speaker, Variety Village is a very unique community, and I encourage my fellow members to share the success stories with anyone they meet who might benefit. And I thank Karen, Linda, and all the staff and volunteers who are making a great big difference in the lives of so many. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, statements the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize the 25th anniversary of a business in my riding of Perry Sound, Muskoka, a business with the most descriptive name, Yummies in a Jar. 
Yummies in a jar makes just what it sounds like, jams, jellies, salad dressings, flavoured maple syrup and other preserves. Lynn Merton started the business in 1992, making jams in her kitchen at home and selling at the local farmer's market. In the year 2000, Lynn and her husband John put an addition on their home and added a commercial kitchen. To this day, all the products are produced in that kitchen. Lynn now has a few part-time staff who work two or three days a week. Lynn responded to my business survey this summer and told me some of the labour changes would be a challenge. For example, she schedules when to cook based on orders and sales and sometimes cancels or adds shifts with less than 48 hours notice. She also commented that the increased minimum wage would cause her to do more of the work herself. Small businesses like Yummies in a Jar will need help to adjust to the new rules and increased minimum wage, and I do hope that this government is listening. Not only does Lynn run a great business, she and her husband, John, a local artist, give back to the community. Just two weeks ago, they held a Christmas open house, which was uh, also a fundraiser for the local SPCA. So congratulations to Lynn Murden and Yummies in a Jar on 25 years of a success running a successful business, and please think of them when you shop locally this Christmas season. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statement, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, most of us have heard this last week of the transaction between Torstar and Post Media involving 41 local daily and weekly news newspapers. We soon, we soon learned that most of these papers, or many of these papers, were closed. Papers that serve small towns and communities and neighbourhoods. Papers that reported on things like a proposed local development, a local volunteer or celebration, or a new community initiative like the new community kitchen that the Ottawa South News reported on in my riding uh, just this week. Speaker. At a time when the internet and social media has brought the world so close to us, it is even more important that we stay connected to the community that is closest to us. That's what local papers do. Local papers build community. They inform us. They connect us. They help young journalists and writers hone their craft. Speaker, it is sad news that the Ottawa South Community News will soon print their last edition in my riding. It has been part of our local community for many years, once called The News under publisher Michael Wallach, then The News EMC, to most recently The Ottawa South Community News. I'd like to recognize reporter Aaron McCracken, who's been reporting on news there since I became an MPP, and I'd like to thank everyone who's worked in community news, continues to work in community news for the work that you do to build our communities. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. For your member the member from Thorn Hill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'm so thrilled to rise today and just uh, mention that this past Sunday was the JNF, Jewish National Fund Negative Dinner, and the uh, entertainment was Howie Mandel, who um, grew up in Toronto, and there's a lot of funny stories about Howie causing a lot of trouble. In fact, I think the Pickle Barrel restaurant on Leslie Street had his picture, and he was banned from entering because he used to like to do pranks, such as uh, going up to a table with a pad of paper and a pen and taking people's orders when he wasn't even the server. So you can imagine how that went over when you're trying to run a business. So Howie was, of course, uh, somewhat inappropriate but very hysterical. And I want to give a shout out to Lance Davis, who's taken over um, the negative dinner from Josh Cooper and did a great job. Vardit Feldman from my riding, well, actually just south of my riding, have to be fair, who was one of the volunteers. Uh, the uh, evening benefited Brothers for Life, which is Achim Lachaim, um, to uh, help Israeli soldiers uh, helping each other. And they've even met with some of the Canadian soldiers. Uh, Lee Mortwina from my riding sang the national anthem of Canada and Israel and she's managed a fairly aggressive cancer over the last few years, um, and she has an organization called Aggressive Positivity. She's a painter. She painted a uh, painting Blessings for Health and gave it to Chief Saunders this year, who we know underwent a kidney transplant. And as Limore says, music is a therapy. So thank you to Limore, thank you to Howie Mandel, thank you to JNF, and thank you especially to the Brothers for Life. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore now time for reports by committees.